and yet it's still so small. Exactly. Dude, that one centimeter is just, it just fucking hit two. I think I gained half a centimeter. All right, welcome to the Future Villains Podcast. My name is Jacob <laughs> the Real Modern, and this is a bunch of fucking idiots that I just watched the Bethesda conference with. <laughs> because the net dashboard has crashed. I yeah, I know. It. The fucking website is broken now. Not even going to load mine. Not even going to contribute <laughs> to the problem. Right, yeah, oh, my screen. God. I am not going to contribute to that issue. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your bandwidth. Okay, well, let's start from the beginning, boys. Rage 2. Excited? Better than expected. Actually, let's not start there. Let's introduce each of you. I'm Jacob. Best in the realm, you know that. Jeremy? What's up? You guys know Don. Say Don. Say hi, Don. I want to switch to my good mic. I didn't realize you were recording because you weren't in the recording. You were yet. bitching at me about recording earlier. I was, and I thought you were still ignoring me. All right, we'll switch <laughs> to your good mic, Michael. Hello. And Ed making his debut in Future Villains content, <laughs> not by choice. Well, at least I'm here. That's right. Okay. So, Rage 2, Don didn't even see most of this, by the way. So, Rage 2, I'm excited for it. I just bought the first one. I'm going to play it. Any thoughts? I hope they improve on the uh, game from the first one and a couple aspects. Like, the uh, open world was just kind of driving. But in this one, it looks like it's a little bit different. All right. Don, are you back? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, did, you played Rage 1, right? Yeah, you sound better. Uh, I think maybe I did. I bought it because I thought you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. It's on Steam, right? Let me check it out here. I'm going to imagine it is. Library. Maybe. <laughs> God, never going to have to wait for Dawn to find it's, out if you... It's clearly not that memorable. Um... I liked it. Okay. I it's literally I literally played one mission. <laughs> Right, that was back in the dawning of the 360. Yeah. All right, so Don really doesn't remember. <laughs> Don, you probably would have played it on your Xbox. <laughs> Don't remember what I'm uh, playing. Uh, that's unlikely. <laughs> There's no video. Uh, apparently, I have this in my library, I guess, but I don't really remember playing this. Okay. Yeah, it must I... not have been very good. Why, why is that <laughs> unlikely? You played a shitload of stuff on the 360. Not rage. Apparently not. Well, anyways, I bought it. I'm going to try it, and hopefully it's good. Ed likes it, so that's the thing. The first rage you bought? Yeah. Oh, okay. There's not even a damn video out on Steam. Oh, weird. Yeah, the first rage is on Xbox for like four bucks right now. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Of course you bought it on the Xbox. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's not multiplayer, anyways, is it? So it don't matter. No, but no. like those, like simple shooter open world games, I prefer those on Xbox. Um, what was next? Was it Doom? Doom, yeah. Which um, we actually get to go to Earth. Fucking excited for it. Yeah, exactly. Hellscape on Earth, awesome. So I think they're just following the progression of the original games. I think Doom Two was Hell on Earth. Yes. Yeah, one of them. You end up going back to Earth, though. Yeah. You- we really couldn't tell that, but... <laughs> it, it was, too. It was super realistic for the time. <laughs> I am excited tell. for Doom 2. Is, is Cutlery at a decent volume for you guys? Because he sounds like you're 20 miles away to me. It has been. Maybe you uh, need to turn me up. He's turned practically all the way up. Oh, yeah, well, whatever. He sounds okay. So, uh... Yeah, Doom. I haven't played the first one. I only played a demo, and I liked it okay. It didn't really blow me away. Apparently, I need to play it. You're talking about the latest Doom that they came out with? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that that, that really didn't tickle my fancy much. Uh, Then we got Wolfenstein. We got, well, we got more likely. We got Wolfenstein uh, New Blood. Yeah, Come Come up. Up. I can't wait for it. Which looks that pretty looks fucking pretty cool. rad. Apparently Old Blood, which is the DLC for the first one, is better than the actual game. So, <laughs> again, that was another shooter. Like, a Doom and Wolfenstein are both, like, solid shooters, but they kind of lose... DOS. What's that? They were great on DOS. 
Not those ones. <laughs> Talking about the <laughs> current generation. <laughs> I think I like those. Oh, I can't say I like those more than the new ones. That would just be trolling. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. These Doom and Wolfenstein, the new ones, it's like, this is cool. And then after a few hours, like, this is, nothing's changed. Yeah. It kind of loses its luster. For me, at least. Um, and the then, one I want to talk about most is Prey. Yeah, the Prey announcement. Is that next? Uh, I think yeah. it was next, yeah. Prey is something that none of us have played, but I think pretty surely all of us will play. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely uh, piqued my interest with this uh, E3 conference with what they announced, especially the new roguelite type mode. Prey, isn't that the same game that's been sitting on uh, Steam like Early Access for a while? No. no. Oh, I'll say that's been on my definitely wish list not. A I don't know what you're talking about. But yeah, uh, Prey, Prey is not on Early Access. It's fully released. P R E Y. Oh, it is now, yeah. P R E Y, yeah. Forty bucks been on my wish list for a while. It was on early access. Before. It was never in early access. That's a Bethesda game. You just miss. I don't know. It's been on my wish list for months. Okay, that's fair, but it wasn't early access. Is all I'm saying. They released that. Uh, they released that really. I don't know. They planned on doing a DLC, but the game did extremely well, much better than they expected. Yeah, it released early last year, fully released. And uh, but people like they released it, and they're like, "Here's a thing we made," and everyone fucking loved it. And it, that's one of those games that word of mouth just took it and made it a big deal because it was just a good game. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. I'm looking at watching the video on Steam right now. It's. Definitely something I want to get when I get a chance. But then they they yeah, they announced uh, there's basically a roguelite mode where, but it's only for that level, right? That moon. I guess we don't know, do we? <laughs> like we don't know if that's the beginning of the game or not. That moon crash thing. Uh yeah, Damn. it's a DLC. And okay, it's he's... out now. It's for twenty bucks. So it's probably like a totally separate from the main game. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a roguelike that changes every time you play it. Is it really out now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can, buy a, you can buy a bundle. It's 40 bucks. Yeah, 40 bucks. Wow. I can get it right if I wanted to. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And they also said that there's going to be a uh, a multiplayer mode that's basically prop hunt from Gary's mod. Oh, some oh, people. Um, what? Back up just one second. Is it just me, or does it say buy Prey 40 bucks, buy Prey Digital Deluxe, also 40 bucks? Yeah, because it's, it's, that's just because it just released. They probably haven't updated hmm. it. They're probably going to reduce the price on the base game. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I was thinking maybe they're giving you a deal for Digital Deluxe for a while or something. They might be doing that too, since it's like day one. Because I think the DLC is 20 bucks in itself. It looks like it is. And then they're going to add the free DLC. I think they said it's going to be free is the, the prop hunt thing. Which just sounds like fun. It's like, why not? Yeah, it looks like they're giving you the DLC for free. I clicked on it, and it says, you know, this was a base game, forty bucks, and then the uh, the Moon Crash DLC twenty or nineteen ninety nine, and it says at the bottom here you'll save this by buying the package nineteen ninety nine. So I, I guess they're giving you the DLC for free if you buy it now. Don't know how long that'll last, but right. It's kind of like when, like, lately when The Witcher goes on sale, you can get The Witcher for $20, or you can get The Witcher Complete for $20. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they keep doing that. It might be that kind of thing. Um, then Fallout 76, I believe, was next. I should pull up an actual thing to make sure we're doing all this right. That one I'm actually confused about. Like, I understand what it is, but... My thing is the implement. Impl- okay, you know what? Let's just not do that word. Implementation. Yeah, implementation. Not inflammation. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but uh, because like the nuking the map and then it changes. My question is, will that be like a time thing? Will it only be you know changed for an hour in game, or will yeah, it be a like... series of events trying to get the the codes, and then once it, everybody has. Oh. Code. Well, thing is, because then after like a while, wouldn't all the servers eventually just have nukes everywhere and there'd be nothing left? I think the nukes are going to be sure. very hard to do. Also, right. the servers, sure 
He said there's going to be six different regions. That means there's going to be six different servers at a time. It's, it's a mega server. It's the way yeah. everything works now. And my- I'd, I'd be curious to see how, like you said, you, you know, you carry your progression with you from whatever server you have me playing on, and you can build anywhere. So what happens if you build in spot A, and you go to somebody else's server who also has a settlement in spot A? How does that work? That's going to be interesting to see how that... I don't think you're going to build... Like, if you guys join my server, you're not going to bring your buildable things. Unless you bring that buildable thing inside of your camp. You're that that device they showed. Mm. I bet you that's what it's probably going to be, is that whenever you leave the server, you unpack your little camp thing, and then when you join the game, you... Or rather, you repack it, and then join a game, you unpack it wherever you want. That would make sense. Which would be no. cool. Like, it, it, if you'd right. imagine, like, okay, we're going to go over to, uh, this probably isn't a thing, but Megaton, but let's go ahead and take our base with us, set up somewhere nearby so we can come back for supplies or whatever. That sounds yeah. badass. Or, right. or you get a bunch of people together that already, like, you build up your bases in seclusion so you don't get raided. You pack it up and you take your party over to an area and you unpack, like, a little fortress. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Possibly. I I will clarify that that when I said, "Oh no, I'm done," I'm sitting there thinking, like, "Okay, everybody's worried that they're going to do with Fallout what they did with Elder Scrolls and doing Elder Scrolls Online, which was fucking god awful." And so when he's similar to where I'm thinking, "Great, we're going to have goddamn MMO in space or MMO in, in, in Fallout." That would right? suck. I agree. If they would have shown right. an ability bar, I would have been done too. And that's why <laughs> right. I, think- I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it to be third person only ability bar yeah. all that shit. That's why I think Jeremy was like, "Hold Downscale- up, <laughs> <laughs> downscaling it down to where it's more of like a, a co-op versus kind of thing." And if the world's really as big as they say, with that limited a number of people, it might be a lot more interesting. I think it's more of the. Has anybody played like early Rust? Not current Rust, but early yeah. Rust, where it's like places yeah, and there's zombies inside, and you can grab a loot and shit like that. I think it's more of like pre-machine that. Pre-machine gun, pre-helicopter rust. Yeah. <laughs> Last I checked, the only experience anybody can have with rust is getting nuked by some god character flying across the fucking sky, cheating his ass off. Yep, hacking C4 and just raining from the sky. Right, as soon as this you spawn. terrible. I'm glad I never played that game. Yeah. Right. No, not worth I have like 100 hours on it. The only thing I am concerned about is I really hope we we don't have to do PvP. Right, I'd rather it be more of a co-op. I mean, I wouldn't mind doing PvP, but not, like, constantly doing PvP. I, will, yeah, I want the option to turn it off. Right. Like, see, my like, thing is, well, I wonder awesome. if you can do... You know how I said there's no NPCs? It's all quests. So how are they going to implement quests? Did they say no NPCs? Uh, item, yeah, because yeah. they said it's all real people. Item drops. Just, uh... Loot, like, random, uh boxes and crates and stuff that you loot in the the abandoned areas oh or, it can uh, be like there's a secret cache here and then you yeah, can go and, and, and then possibly you in the cache my, or maybe my, you get your quest from the overseer because the overseer can't be a real human being i think you don't know i that. think my biggest concern right now with the game is the fact that it does have servers and such and if they're f- focusing on the multiplayer even though they did say you can play it single player and solo does that mean it's always online Yes. No. Almost certainly. Probably. Yeah. Almost. Everything is nowadays. Yes. Just get used to that, man. It's it's just a thing now. I mean, I'm just used to the being able to, you know, take, say, for instance, your PlayStation Four. You buy, uh, you know, Fallout for it. You want to play it all offline because you're in a hotel room or something, and you have no way to access their Wi-Fi or something. I don't know. We'll see. I, I I'm, I'm with you, Jeremy. I don't like this whole leasing a damn license type thing and you don't actually own anything even though you're paying owning prices for almost everything although you you still don't own it they can take it from you at any given time okay and that now, aggravates me is fallout 76 going to be uh monthly pay or no it's gonna be six i doubt it it'll probably microtransaction yeah uh, it's definitely gonna be a one-time purchase because of the uh, uh collector's edition uh, yeah the head edition or whatever the fuck they call it. the head edition <laughs> The head edition, wow. By the special edition, get hit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, God. I'm sure there's still going to be some sort of microtransactions because if they're going to have the servers open for years, they can't rely on right. first-time buyers. 
Well, it'll be microtransactions. It'll probably be cosmetic stuff and DLC and expansion packs. And if if they can sustain the game off of DLC and expansion packs, I'd be happy. But I really hope that they, with at least the cosmetics, they don't get too ridiculous. Because like, okay, Killing Floor didn't used to have the kill the cosmetics action or stuff that they had now. And now I'm seeing dudes with like enormous foam Texan hat things that look retarded. I'm like, this used to be like a gore fest horror flick that that immersed you in fear. Now all I see is like Looney Memes. Tune adventure type shit, and it aggravates the crap out of me. Like, like, I mean, but at least it's not you know affecting yeah. gameplay. Plus, not only that, you got to realize Bethesda's never really done cosmetic DLC unless you're talking about their paid mods, which is a whole different story. Well, not only that is. I know you guys don't like it, but in ESO, like I'm just using this example, they never did anything. The only thing they did was, since it's an MMO, skip progression. Like you can just progress to a certain point, which we're probably going to leave that as an MMO. A lot of MMOs but, like, have that. All the cosmetic stuff. So you notice how in the trailer they had the uh, power armor sets, sets, and they hit, like one was yellow, one was pink, one was this. I think that's going to be like the cosmetic area. Yeah. What were you saying, Ed? I'd be cool with that. Well, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> well, what was the topic? Fallout 76. <laughs> no, I think I pretty much said all of it. Okay. Um, I don't. I I think maybe you guys misheard or miss. I think Todd maybe misspoke about the whole no NPC thing. I don't think that's gonna work because you got the you got the uh, the overseer. She's obviously she. They said that she gives us a quest to go out and you know, find the nuclear or whatever. And yeah. There's going to be people that live in these towns and there's going to be the robots. And I think that was either misheard or misspoke or I don't know, but there's no way there's not going to be NPCs. Yeah. I, yeah, agree. I imagine I agree. That, that there's going to be some quest givers and yeah. some vendors and stuff like that. I, I, there has I, to be. Right. One thing that I was, if you look at it, it looked like there was a bounty system because when they're showing off the PvP, oh. The guy, like, he walked up and it said engaging in combat or something like that, or attacker or something like that, and it, has, it says, like, something that says plus 10 caps for killing him. So maybe he's killed other players, and that makes... That's awesome a kill. thing... That's a thing in other MMOs, where, like, you turn on your PvP, I think in the Anarchy Online, where you turn I'm on your game. PvP and you can have people hunt you. Yeah. Right. So, like, if you kill people, then everybody's like, okay, we kill him, we get more caps for him. Oh, shit, that's a thing in the Division, in Dark Mode. Right, exactly. Yeah. Rogue agents and whatnot. Yeah, so that, I, absolutely, that's awesome. I, I'd be cool with that. The, the funny thing about that whole deal is, now that that dude is going to be shamed by the fact that he got burned by a muzzle loader. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> you got owned by a muzzle loader, son. Also, if there's muzzle loaders in the game, that's fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> right? Can you imagine taking on a dude in power armor with a muzzle loader? Like, um, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a force disparity here. <laughs> I don't know. That muzzle loader's got some power. It did. It was way overpowered for what it should be. <laughs> Either that, that dude is really, really weak. But I think it said like level twenty-two over like yeah. a, what her name was. I, I, I shot the power armor with a muzzle loader. Yeah, I love the idea of them being like, should we put in muzzle loaders? I mean, yeah, why not? <laughs> Whatever. I mean, shit. So I mean, I... in the apocalypse, I that, I feel like that would be a weapon I would try and make as a muzzle loader. <laughs> it's like <laughs> stuff it with gunpowder and sticks of pellets inside. I would <laughs> rather have a muzzle loader than another hundred billion series of freaking pipe pistols. Like yeah. Fallout 4, every damn weapon's a damn pipe pistol. Even in, I was telling Jeremy about this earlier today. I'm in an area that has been locked and sealed since before the bombs dropped. Everything in it is pristine and untouched. Pipe the pistol. chest still has a damn pipe pistol in it. That's fucking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's like, where did this pipe pistol come from? They didn't make these until after the bombs dropped. That was a necessity to build weapons. They were using water pipes and shit. That, that's when you have one of those moments from the movies where it's like, no! <laughs> like watching somebody put a key in a Humvee. So, I also kind of want to touch on the Skyrim Alexa edition, because <laughs> that came out just before they revealed uh, more about 76. Dude, Dude I, would, thing. I would fucking play that. No, it's not. Uh, I would, if I had Alexa, I would fuck around with that. 
that that was the most hilarious thing I've seen so far at E3. That's I, I, when I came in. Did that was that like a, a a voice acted like Dungeons and Dragons kind of thing? Yeah, that's a thing now on Alexa. By the way, they do have a D and D like voice that game. Would be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought it was really random that Keegan Michael Key from Key and Peele was in it. I thought it was absolutely perfect, spot on. They and... missed one joke though. What's that? Instead of eating all the cheese wheels, he should have started eating sweet rolls. I know, <laughs> right? Eat all the sweet rolls. <laughs> I just love that they were like, and we're bringing out Skyrim on some more platforms. They're like they know, they know. Oh yeah, they just they just. Uh, <laughs> it's fucking beautiful. Bethesda, in my opinion, year after year, has been doing very well with these E three shows, and they know when to put in that little bit of sense of humor to alleviate some of the, you know, tensions that can be brought up before Todd, announcing. Todd titles. Howard is just amazing. I'm going to watch I that guy talk all day. Gally's got a crush. Ain't it cute? Ah, Todd <laughs> Howard's amazing. He's been around forever. Eh, I'd do him. Oh, damn. damn. <laughs> all right. Well. I was all excited when Phil Spencer was on stage for the Microsoft conference. I love these guys. They're super entertaining. Yeah, exactly. They, they do good. I think Bethesda has got some of the strongest uh, PR people out yeah. there. Pete Hines, as a matter of fact, I was trying to get these guys to watch the kind of funny talks over the E3 conference thing, and they were on the phone with Pete Hines, like, what, five minutes before he was on stage for Bethesda? Yeah. Greg Miller was, was just on the phone crazy. with them, chatting with them. Oh, because there's a widget. Because they were watching the live stream, and there's, like, a widget on their screens, and they called him to complain about it. <laughs> Damn, going right up to the chain of command. Yeah. Hey, he's been on their show a couple times. Regardless, the uh, the secret announcements. What did y'all feel? No, we're not there yet. Calm down, Jeremy. <laughs> so no, what are we up to now? We're up the, to Fallout Shelter on the Switch. Oh, okay. Which is still not it's... on the Switch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's probably going to take a couple um, hours. I'm but excited. Which is still not on the Switch. I mean, the game's short, so it's interesting. But I, I don't know. Hopefully they'll do it. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll actually finish it now because, like, the way I play mobile games is, like, I'll go on there and be like, and do a couple things, and I'm done. Like, that's how I usually play mobile games, so I never finished. I didn't know you could finish Fallout Shelter. I think you I run usually, out of room. Yeah, I think I usually also got fucked over at some point because I wasn't paying attention to it for two weeks. Because <laughs> the nest working now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the game was good for what it is. It's definitely a very yeah. good mobile game, so I'm glad that they're bringing it to the Switch because I would love to play it on my Switch. Yeah, I mean, you guys know I sit here with my Switch when I'm working and like, like that Pokemon quest is awesome for me because I can just send my Pokemon on a fight and not fuck with them for a couple minutes. Um. They also announced Elder Scrolls Blades, which looks really cool. Don, what were you saying during that trailer? You said something about, like, this takes place sometime. Right. I thought I caught them saying something about the blades have been disbanded, so you're kind of, like, have. trying to hide. As I recall, the blades were disbanded right after the Oblivion Crisis because they kind of failed to protect the Emperor. Uh, so yep. that by the time Skyrim picks up, uh, the blades are pretty much mo either mostly wiped out, and the rest are in hiding. And that's where you meet the uh, the Delphine. Yeah, what Delphine. if what if there's and a story like the last blade. in this game where you become one of those guards protecting the emperor? Well, it sounded like it was already after all that because they're they being disbanded. So I'm I'm thinking it's after Oblivion, but before Skyrim, God, like right after remember, Oblivion. Do you remember when the Eldmeri Dominion uh, declared war by sending the head of a thousand blades to the emperor? Uh, <laughs> well, <they're laughs> that's, that's a thing that happened it's when the elves declared war on the humans. Huh. I think he's trying to say that you play as a guy that has a thousand blades in his head. What? <laughs> Guys, meet Ed. This is if the more you hang out with Ed, the more he's going to be like, hey, you know that crazy fucking thing here? And it's, he's always fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I, no, you're making that up. I'm sure I've read something about that in one of the games, but I, I'm, I'm drawing kind of a blank. One of these days, Ed's going to come up with some crazy fucking thing. It's going to sound like he's wrong. We're going to assume he's right, but he's just fucking with us. 
<laughs> I'm waiting for it. I try not to be wrong. <laughs> it's true. You don't like people when people are wrong. <laughs> I'm hoping that this uh, this new Elder Scrolls Blades game actually has controller support. What? Is that a thing oh, on yeah, mobile? They're, they're, PC. Well, they're releasing it on PC, Switch. Oh, Xbox. of course. Yeah, but okay. I guess I was thinking for mobile. So, well, even even with mobile, like there's Bluetooth controllers that you can use. Is that I know a... something we forgot. Do people do that? Yeah, I do it. Why? Because games like Crashlands and GTA and all that. Those are both on your PC. Yeah, but you can't always take your desktop PC wherever you go. Yeah, but as as you can see, the phone is going to start becoming more of like a PSP type thing. You know, you are people right. are going to start using that more as a handheld console than anything else. I just saw a thing today. I don't know what they were playing, but it was like a controller that you could like attach your phone to, and like your your phone was like the top of the controller. It was basically like a switch, but it was. The screen was higher up on the controller. It was weird. I don't remember what the hell they were playing. It was probably fork knife. Fork knife? <laughs> yeah. yeah, fork knife. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Or fork nut, either one. Is that your way of saying Fortnite without having to actually oh, speak the unmentionable name? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Fortnite. They, Voldemort? they brought Fortnite to Switch. It's like freaking Harry Potter, he who shall not be named. Yeah, so what do you guys feel about Fortnite on Switch? All right, so next up we uh <laughs> oh we forgot something. Oh yeah, we forgot a couple of little things. Quake, it... yeah. Oh, how do we miss Quake? That's not God damn it, Kotaku. <laughs> well, that was your first problem using Kotaku. Oh, fucking a. <laughs> right. Yeah, they don't have this as one of their stories. Yeah, Kotaku and Polygon, just just stay away from those. No, I, I love I love Kotaku. Kotaku is not cancer. We've been over this before. All of the rest of their sister sites are. They are not. <laughs> uh-huh. Kotaku's great. Um uh-huh. Quake, yeah, Quake Champions. We're all gonna download that and play it. Cause uh I wanna I'm see. I'm downloading it actually right now. I swear to god it said free weekend. Uh yeah, it's free right now. Go to the step in on Steam. Yeah, but Steam said free weekend, and I was like, oh, well, it's Sunday. I'm not going to well, yeah, download it. Yeah, they say free it. weekend on everything. Do even they? Even though it's only like, yeah, even if it's a week long. Well, that's idiotic. Yeah. So the thing with Quake Champions, because I don't think Don was in here when they were talking about this. Uh, did you get into Quake, Don? I played some of it. It's not really my cup of tea. Quake Champions looks pretty good. Um, but if you download it right now... It's too. Uh, it's always been traditionally too Twitch based of a shooter for me to enjoy. Oh, well, download it anyways because we're gonna play it. Uh, <laughs> because if you download it for free for this free week, you get to keep it. Like you get to to keep playing it past this week until it actually launches free to play. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, I'm excited to give it a shot. Hell yeah! I hope it's not. Like uh, that other game that I still can't think of, Lawbreakers. I don't think it will I'm, be. Yeah, I don't think it'll be that bad. I mean, it's Quake. It's like... Lawbreakers was a yeah. PR nightmare. It's I don't Quake. Even remember Lawbreakers was that the one with the Ooh. giant guy with the rocket launcher? Maybe this was the one where you could like Lawbreakers is the one that nobody knows about because you know that shit died really quick. Dude, I was hyped as hell for Lawbreakers. I I love those kind of games. I love Unreal. I played it. I got fucking. I got an invite to play it, and I hated it. Like it came out right after like this, like peak of Overwatch's hype. Yeah. For like, oh my god, everybody loves this fucking game, and then like that game came out, and everybody's like, "What what the fuck is that?" (laughs) It just it wasn't good. Like you could shoot behind you, but you couldn't tell where you were shooting. So like I was like, all right, so that's neat, but I can't tell where I'm shooting. I'm just not going to use that. Uh, <laughs> that was exactly what happened. It was, and then there were slow mo bubbles you could go into, but you usually end up getting shot when you went in them. So I was like, I'm just not going to use that. And you just so you ended up using none of the mechanics that made the game unique. So it's just useless. But uh, Quake Champions looks like fun. If it's just Quake with an added character ability, I'm all for it. And it looks like that's what it is. So hopefully that'll be good. 
And then, uh, Jeremy, you want to take over since you creamed yourself for these games? <laughs> Are you talking about Legends? The one game we skipped over? Oh, shit. oh yeah, Legends. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was really cool. We got like a whole four or five seconds, you know, of actually True. looking at the visuals. Oh, wait, you, everything else wait just... hold on. You creamed yourself for Legends? No, no, I didn't. Okay, well, that's what I was talking point. about. <laughs> I, I did play a lot of Legends, though, and I do love Legends, and I'm glad it's coming to other consoles. I'm so glad it's coming to the Switch, because I will now yes. play the fuck out of it. I, I, just... I need a quick clarification. What Legends are we talking about? Because it seems like every IP nowadays has to have some form of Legends. It's Elder the, Scroll. Yeah, the card game. Elder Scrolls Legends. Elder Scrolls Legends. I've been, oh, okay. playing, I've been playing ESL. I, was saying, <laughs> I see Ed playing it all the time. The, um... The fact that they are changing developers is a little worrisome to me. As Why? A fan of the... Why are they doing that? Do you know? I haven't read up on it too much, so I can't really say specifically, or even if they've announced why. All I know is that um, Dire Wolf is no longer going to be the lead developer on it. Uh-oh. When did that happen? Uh, recently, like within a week or so ago. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't be noticeable. Oh. They might be they might be doing it to put Dire Wolf on a different project. Could be. You okay, Don? It's not like you just died. I'm trying to recover my apparently I already have a Bethesda Net uh, yeah. account. Who knew? Dude, I can't even get on mine because the fucking website's down. I'm not Yeah, trying. it keeps on going down for me and I have to like, refresh and try to get it back up. I'm not gonna contribute to the problem. Well I'm trying to play Quake. <laughs> oh, it's on Steam. I got the, I got the launcher it's downloaded. Steam, I'm just but, trying to get so I can log in. <laughs> yeah, you have to log in through. Uh, the, 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 oh, Bethesda. I see. Mm-hmm. Damn, I've been logged in all day. <laughs> <laughs> Ed's the guy that's already in the Toys R Us. Like, fuck you! I was already here. <laughs> get out. <laughs> and then they were like, "No, we're closing." <laughs> Trevor. I'll, I'll, I'll rent the place. Just leave the toys. Yeah. <laughs> and All for right. good, from what I hear, do you guys hear about that? Toys R Us, I guess, is closing their doors for good. Uh, yeah. I think they're keeping their European stores open. Oh, All shit. three of them. That don't mean shit to me. <laughs> Fair? Yeah, they will be their stores on Mars. They've announced that like quite a while ago. Well, that's because yeah. kids don't have toys anymore. They have iPhones. And then Todd it's Howard good. announced that they were going to talk about the future of their company. And the, we all had a collective no, we in the pants moment. <laughs> mostly we, we all, yes. Mostly you, because we knew these things are happening. Well, like, was it Starbound? Star, you know, Starbound, yeah. Yeah, they're making a new Starbound game. It's pretty neat. Starbound 2. <laughs> Starbound 3D. But yes, um, seeing Starbound... Uh, Star <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You did it to me. All right. Field finally announced after all and of it- the leaks and this speculation it's it's just one hell of a payoff for a bethesda studios fan payoff literally we've seen a planet and a zoom out Woo! payoff it's like that, we but, already knew about like it, we literally know as much as we did going in like there was nothing we knew maybe the logo that's about it that's all we learned jeremy there's nothing there yes that is true but it put a lot of minds at ease that it actually does exist because even though there was a lot of leaks and speculation none of those were confirmed officially so, well, yeah. Uh, what is but this? Like, Fallout New California? What? Republic? No, no. No, uh, that's a mod, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Fallout New California. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And they announced the other game that who knew they were going to make Elder Scrolls Six. Yeah. Which... <laughs> I'm I interested kind of, to know uh, where that's at. I know. I God. I wish I would recorded the the press I think conference. It's high rock. That, that, that the thing is, like I think they already and, had a a uh, Elder Scrolls game that took place in High Rock. I don't yeah, think that matters. Uh, two. Uh, Red Red Guard. Right. It was, it was number See, two. See, which is weird because I would like it. to go to a place we haven't been to before. And, and there are a couple of them, and, and it could be. Um, well, Damn it! I need like a fucking world map of, of Elder we, Scrolls. Again. We're gonna run out of places though. Oh wait, here here's the thing. Eventually. ESO has already added the regions that we wanted to see in the single player. Yeah. Ones. They added they added elsewhere. They added uh Black Marsh. We've already been see, to Brew. Yep, I gotta see it all. As a general rule of thumb, we don't speak of, of abominations such as ESO, so uh ESO moving on. Is amazing. Okay, so according to a website, Arena covered the whole empire, all eight of the provinces, the Imperial City 
Uh, it didn't develop until its own province later. Daggerfall took place in Hammerfall. Morrowind took place in Morrowind. Oblivion uh, took Martin place uh, in Cyrodiil, and Skyrim takes place in Skyrim. Future games can visit other provinces or go to other continents. So I know Redguard's might... a side side game, but it did take place in High Rock. <clears throat> well, uh, Morrowind was Vardenfell and Mournhold and Saltheim. Uh, or was it Solstheim? Yeah, it was yeah, Solstheim. Yes. The Blood and the Blood Isles. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Skyrim goes back to Solstheim after yes. the uh, after the volcano on Vardenfell erupts. Everything's just covered in ash. Wow, spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, Daggerfall was in High Rock. Oh, that's what it was. Yep. Yeah. Um, because I think... I thought you said that was Hammerfall. It's directly north of Hammerfall, High Rock. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> but, yeah, but we've only went to, like, the... the Daggerfall is actually a pretty small area of fucking High Rock. So, that's just, to say the least. Well, another thing is, I don't... One thing I have a problem with is I don't want another mountainy fucking world. That's oh, Skyrim. I, I well, it looks more forest region to me. I mean, yeah, it had some tall mountains, but they were kind of narrow, you know. I, so it looked I, like I, more of a forest the area. The desert. Plus, right, exactly. Plus, we don't even know if they're just keeping it in one province. They may go into multiple. We don't know. The I game didn't... is so far out, so. <laughs> I just love that during the press conference they showed that and you guys were like, where is it? Where is it? And Bethesda went, fuck you. We're not telling you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I knew they were going to do a They could pull... They haven't even made the world yet. Yeah. That's they fair. Could pull, they could pull a, from under us and be like, all right, so it's set in three or four provinces. Yeah. They could be like, it takes place in six provinces. It's online. There's co-op. And you can even build a base. <laughs> <laughs> See, um, Todd Howard in an interview several years ago said that there was two projects before the next Elder Scrolls, one of which was, of course, now confirmed to 76. Now the second is Starfield. Now these both these games, of course, are coming out well before. I wouldn't even be surprised if Starfield doesn't come out next year, but the year after. Um, yeah. And Elder the Scrolls... reason they wanted the reason they wanted Elder Scrolls to be so far out, according to Todd Howard, was they didn't have the technology to do what they wanted to do. So, with that in mind, I have a gut feeling it is going to be a very, very, very large game. I think they didn't want it to be Skyrim 2. They just they wanted it to be an entirely new thing. Yeah. Well, see, if you notice any, like, if we, it's Starfield, but the thing is, every single game has had, like, a special date that it's released. Like, uh, Fallout 4 was 11-11-11, or 11-11-something, right. whatever, I forgot. Skyrim no, no, 11, was 11, 11, 11, 11. Was, Yeah, that was uh, Skyrim. Duh. And then Fallout was... It was had to do with the vault that they were in. It was November 5th. Yeah. Or something of the sort. Remember it was November 7th, 2015. In November 10th, 2015, yep. Yeah, because it was Vault 110. That's what it was. They should, they should always release Fallout games on October 23rd. <laughs> Why? Isn't That's that the day that the bombs dropped? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, Fallout 3 came out October 28th. New they Vegas, missed it. Yeah, New <laughs> Vegas came out October 19th. Huh. Yeah, I, I called that close. too. That it was going to come out in November. Oh, yeah. That's when 90% of the games come out. Yeah. November, October. Yeah, trying to get the Christmas sales. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember buying Fallout 3 because my birthday is on October 16th and I had enough Christmas money to buy Fallout 3 and Gears of War. That's and why I, I love how my birthday is in mid-November. I get all the good games then I get Christmas and get all the ones I didn't get <laughs> for my birthday. And I pre-ordered the collector's edition of 3 and Gears of War and uh, paid for both of them in full and then I went to go pick those motherfuckers up from GameStop and they had taken... They are. They had pre-ordered my regular editions, so the rest of that money just disappeared. Fuck you, GameStop. That's the last time I ever pre-ordered a game. Literally. 
Well, trust Sounds me. like a great experience, and one of the reasons why brick and mortars are disappearing. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, I think that's literally the last game. I, oh, I guess Far Cry 5, because I got it cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the last game that I pre-ordered was Colonial Marines. Oh, I'm sorry. oh, that hurts. I got a 95% uh, return when I took it to GameStop the Did next you day. really? Yep. That thing Damn. went down and flipped. But it took me four hours to beat the uh, story mode, and you had to have four people. There was no getting away around it. Oh, wow. We're lucky they took it back at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was like a, a rare case. <laughs> So we'll never see it's like again. Did you guys have any <laughs> other comments, questions, concerns, any other things you want to say before we end this? Do you guys want to rate the uh, overall conference? I, it was awesome. <laughs> like, we, we haven't <laughs> talked about a rating scale or anything, Jeremy. Yeah, I know. 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. <laughs> I'm going to say Not awesome out of 10. Not enough Roblox. Hey, that that's fair. Beats the crap out of anything else we've seen out of E3 so far. I agree with Don. Actually, I think it's the best so far. The Can best. we talk about some of the Microsoft conference? Do we... Uh... No, because we're going to get someone else in here with that, too. Alright. So, thank you for listening, guys. This has been the Future Villains Podcast. Uh, check us out at futurevillains.com F-E-W-T-R-U-E-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-S dot com on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, all the things. Thank you guys for joining me. This was a good one.